Uh, good morning. Today we're going to convert two Gerber files and a drill file that represent a printed circuit board into 3D so they can be imported into SolidWorks. So I have a directory with my two Gerber files and my drill file. And I've created a subdirectory called Working and one called Output. And that's where we'll store our files. We start NetXG and go to Preferences. And we make sure that our working directory is set to the working location and the output directory is set to the output. We also make sure that the polygon type is Leonov. We've set arc resolution to 22.5 and, and max points to 2048. And that's about all I need to do there. So now let's load our Gerber files into the stack up here. So we'll click here and we'll go to the directory where we have them and we'll put star.top and there's our top Gerber file. Now we need the dielectric in between and now let's load the next Gerber file star.bot and there's our bottom file. So now we've got a stack up and let's assign some thickness properties so they can be extruded into 3D. I'm going to select layers 1 and 3 which are our metal layers and set them to a thickness of 001 inch then I'm going to select layer 2, which is my dielectric, and set it to 005. So now I know the thicknesses of those layers, and I'll click OK. Now we have to convert the drill data into a Gerber file so we can load that in also. So we go to the drill dialog. Since it's not a Gerber file, we go to drill to Gerber. And at this point, the problem is that drill data sometimes is not fully defined in the file itself, so the user has to enter some parameters. First, we'll load a reference file which is our Gerber file. Let's put this star dot top and we'll load our gain 5. And this means that all our Gerber files are 3, 4 inches leading zero suppression in absolute. Now we'll load our drill file. And we need to know what to put in here. So if our Gerber's in inches, our drill is likely in inches also. And let's open the drill file in a text editor and have a look at it. Um, you can see a few things. You can see, first of all, that it has leading zeros. So we're going to say zero inclusion is leading. Now we have to figure out what the format is. That is, you see there's no decimal points here. So you have to tell the program where to reinsert the decimal point. And based on the size of this board, it appears that there's two places to the left and four to the right. That would put this drill at 1.6 inches. So I'm going to put here 2.4. So now we've got 2.4 inch, we know there's zero, and we're going to assume it's absolute. So we'll click the translate button, and we'll exit there. And now we can load the drill data as Gerber file. So we'll say throughhole.gerber, that was just created, and it goes from stack up position 1 to stack up position 3. And we don't even need to do that. So we'll just set the uh, number of sides for each hole to 16. All right, now we're going to go to the output and we're going to select the 3D I format. That's our 3D format. And we're going to select create dielectric bodies. That'll give us a dielectric between the top and bottom. And for our window, we're going to select use the data extents since we don't have a separate layer that defines the outline of the board. And we'll just call this gain9.3di. So I think we've set up everything we need to set up and now we'll go file execute and we'll give this a job file gain 9 also and that holds all our settings now the program will run should not take very long and it's done and there was no errors and now we're going to view the output which is a 3d i file and this is our own 3d viewer and you can see that we're able to roll around let's look at the layers that were created Let's turn them all off and turn on M1. That's our top metal layer. A D1 is all the drills between the top and the bottom. You can see that they're represented there as polygonish. M2 is the bottom metal layer. So if we turn these three on, you can see how the top and bottom are connected. And D1 board is the dielectric that was created that goes between the top and bottom. There's no actual CAD data for that. It's simply the board outline and then minus any vias that pass through. So that's our 3D model. We need to get it into a form that SolidWorks can read. So we're going to export this as parasolids. 
File, Export, and pick Parasolid. We have a few settings here. We want this organized by layer. Anything that's a common Z height will unionize. We'll recover arcs and circles and extrusion data. So when we do our Boolean operations, we have to break all the arcs and circles in the input file into small segments to approximate them. And that would make our 3D data very big. We're going to try to recover those back into arcs, and that'll compact our 3D data. These other parameters don't need to be checked. So we're going to click Export. We'll select a file. Gain 9 is good, and it's done. So now let's import this into SOLIDWORKS and see what we get. I'm using the 2011 version of SOLIDWORKS, but Parasolid's format should be compatible with all versions of SOLIDWORKS. So we'll go File, Open. We're in the Output directory, you see, and we want to open a file of type Parasolid. And there's the file. We don't need any special options. And we just click Open and click OK. So there it is. You see that we have an assembly, and we have four parts in it, one representing each layer. Let's look at them one at a time. Let's hide these guys. And so now we're looking just at the board. You see there's the board with the, uh, with the holes in it, and you see the holes seem to be circles. Now let's look at the drills. And you see these are little cylinders, and they go from whatever the top and bottom of the via was. And let's look at M1. And you can see that M1 sits on top of the via. These are all nice clean contours. See, that's, that's the, essentially the contour that was extruded into 3D. You can see the arc was recovered, so that greatly reduces the size of the file. And let's look at uh, M2. And there's your M2 layer below the M1 layer. So what you have is a very clean 3D model. That's just the metal there. And if we turn on the dielectric, and we're back to our final model. Thank you.